Hi guys, and welcome to this presentation on bone health. Today we're gonna to discuss ways to keep our bones healthy. Some of our objectives are to understand the importance of bone health and examine what affects bone health. Is it lifestyle choices, the environment we live in, or our genetics, or is it a combination of all three? We'll explore ways to keep bones healthy as we age. Bones provide structure for the human frame. They protect our organs. For instance, the rib cage protects the heart and the lungs. They also provide an anchor for muscles. Muscles are our main movers, but movement would not occur without those muscles being attached to bones. They also provide storage for calcium. It's best to protect our bones from childhood. So if we have a diet that's rich in calcium as children, we store a lot of calcium and bones that protect us later on in life. But even if your childhood was not very rich in calcium, you can still help your bones by having a very high calcium diet as an adult. With regard to the importance of bone health, we have to explore bone mass and understand that bones are living tissue. They continually regenerate throughout the lifespan. However, our peak Bone density or peak mass occurs at the age of 30. Prior to the age of 30, we have more bone cells that are being produced than bone cells that are dying off. So the rate at which we produce bone cells prior to the age of 30 are much faster than the rate at which we lose bone cells. Unfortunately, after the age of 30, that reverses and we start losing bone cells at a faster rate than we're producing bone cells. So we wanna continually work on remodeling and build up that bone mass as much as we can with what we do in our lifestyle choices. Because if we don't, if we continually lose more bone cells than we're producing, we can be at risk for developing osteoporosis. Now osteoporosis is a disease of the bones where the bones become brittle or weak. They start thinning out and become porous and almost resemble Swiss cheese. So the risk for developing osteoporosis depends a lot on your genetics, things you do in your lifestyle, and also the gains that you had prior to the age of 30 with regard to storing calcium and the losses that you have with, after the age of 30. So if you were fortunate enough to have a lot of calcium as a child, you were able to store more calcium in that bone bank, then the risk for osteoporosis may be less as you age. But what can we do? How can we protect our bones? What affects bones as far as the health of the bones and the density of the bones? And how do we keep those bones healthy as we age? Well, when we think about certain things that affect bones, obviously calcium is the one that comes to mind. A calcium-rich diet will protect bones, where a calcium-deficient diet causes the bone density to be less and less as we age. Physical activity is another factor that can help with regenerating bone cells, specifically weight-bearing activity that puts stress on the bones. It will help to regenerate more bone cells. Our gender has a lot to do with it. Females are more at risk for developing osteoporosis. Size is also an issue. The smaller our bone structure or our frame, the more the risk for developing osteoporosis. Age is a factor. As with anything else, the older we get, the more we're at risk for disease. And same with the osteoporosis. So if you are male or female over the age of 70, your risk for osteoporosis is about the same. Below the age of 70, then the risk is greater for females, and that's based on hormones. Another factor is tobacco and alcohol use, as well as caffeine. All of these things leach calcium from the bones and cause the bones to lose bone mass rather than gain. And even something with caffeine, I mean, coffee or tea has a lot of health benefits for many reasons but one of the things that is negative about it is that caffeine does cause calcium to leach out of the bones. So you have to be careful to make sure you're not having too much of any of these substances. Ethnicity and family history play a major role in developing osteoporosis. 
If you have a family member, specifically a sibling or a parent with osteoporosis, your risk is greater. Some disorders, conditions that you may develop, specifically eating disorders, anorexia, bulimia, those raise your risk for developing osteoporosis as you get older. And even some medications such as corticosteroids, uh, such as prednisone, that type of medication causes issues with the bones and could put you at risk in the future. Your hormone levels are very important to bone health, and that's why females at a, are at a higher risk, specifically when they're around menopause. The estrogen levels start to decrease, and they start losing bone mass at a faster rate. So what do we do? How do we keep our bones healthy with all these things that are against us? Well, we want to try and make sure that we're getting enough calcium through our diet every day. And if we can't get it through the diet, we can speak to a health professional and try supplementation. But we want to shoot for 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams of calcium a day. If you're under the age of 50, then 1,000 milligrams is sufficient. And over the age of 50, you want to have about 1,200 milligrams. But in addition to calcium, it is so important that our vitamin D levels are normal and that we supplement with vitamin D. The recommended daily allowance is 600 international units. Most of us are deficient in vitamin D because there aren't as many food sources and we don't get as much sunlight in certain parts of the country, specifically the Northeast in the winter, for example. So going to a physician, having blood tests done and finding out your level of vitamin D is very important. If you are deficient, your physician will recommend a possible higher dosage than what the recommended daily allowance is, but only take more than the RDA based on physician approval because vitamin D does get stored in the body and if it is, there's a lot of it, it's going to be toxic to the body. So you want to make sure that in addition to calcium, you're taking vitamin D because one of the benefits of vitamin D is that it helps to absorb calcium into the body. If you're taking in calcium and not absorbing it, then it's useless. It would be similar to trying to fill up a bucket with water that has holes in it. It's just going to go through your body and then be excreted in urine and you're not going to absorb it. So the vitamin D helps to absorb calcium. You want to also include weight bearing activity. Activities such as jogging, running, playing tennis, climbing up stairs, doing any kind of plyometric exercise where you're jumping. These put stress on the bones, but it's a good stress that helps bones repair and rebuild. And again, you want to avoid substance abuse such as alcohol, tobacco, and caffeine. Tobacco, you don't want to have at all. If you're going to have alcohol, have it in moderation and similar with caffeine. The more you can avoid caffeine, the better it will be for your bones. So let's look at some of these calcium sources. There are so many foods out there that do provide calcium in addition to the typical ones that we think of such as dairy, milk, yogurt, cheese. But there are other things such as almonds and broccoli, kale, canned salmon, specifically with the bones, and some soy products. They're very healthy and also high in calcium. Some vitamin D sources include oily fit fish such as tuna and salmon, sardines, egg yolks are high in vitamin D, and fortified milk. If you notice a milk carton, it always has fortified with vitamin D. Sunlight is also a great way to get some vitamin D. Problem is, sunlight can also cause damage to the skin. So most of us wear sunscreen. That's great to protect us against skin cancer, however, the sunscreen blocks the, the rays and prevents the absorption and the manufacturing of vitamin D in the body. So it's recommended that if you can get about 10 to 15 minutes of sunlight a day without sunscreen, that's enough to give you what you need for vitamin D, but not enough to cause you risk for cancer. Then put your sunscreen on and you'll be set. So we need to find ways that we can prevent bone loss. And one of the ways is changing your lifestyles, increasing your um, calcium intake via food as well as supplements if needed, increase your vitamin D so that you're at a healthy level, and also increasing your exercise, specifically weight bearing. 
We discussed some of the aerobic type activities and jumping activities, but you also want to add strength training via dumbbells or elastic bands because strength training really does a great job in putting stress on the bone. Let me give you an example. So if I were to take my arm and do a typical biceps curl, as I curl my arm and then lengthen it, curl it and lengthen it, this motion, specifically if I have a weight in my hand, pulls on the bones. The muscles are working to move my arm up and down, but those muscles are providing tension and stress on the bone because remember, muscles are attached to the bone via tendons. So every time I do this motion, those muscles are pulling on the bone. What happens is the bone starts experiencing stress, but as I said before, it's a good stress but it causes inflammation and then all the new bone cells start regenerating to help repair and rebuild the bone. So it's important to make sure that as we're aging and that rate at which we're losing bone cells is greater than the rate at which we're producing bone cells, it's so important that we do things such as weight bearing activities, such as jogging and also resistance training activities, such as weight training, where we can put more stress on the bone and make that bone regenerate and produce more bone cells so that we start slowing down that loss. There are other things you can do with discussing your situation with a doctor. Let them evaluate you and diagnose you through certain types of tests and examining your family history. If your family history is positive for osteoporosis, your doctor or physician would like to probably do some type of tests. One test is a scan, a bone density scan called DEXA, where x-rays are used to look through the bone and look at the density of the bone. And there's all types of scales and percentages that they use to determine if you have osteopenia, which is the beginning of osteoporosis, could lead to it, or if you actually have the full-blown disease of osteoporosis. In addition, the doctor might order, order some type of blood work and urine tests where they can see if there's a reason you're excreting or not absorbing calcium other than osteoporosis. There could be some other underlying conditions that can cause uh, bone loss and the um, loss of calcium. So in summary, consult your doctor, your physician, have them do whatever tests are necessary and evaluate your situation. If they think you need medication, they may prescribe that to help slow down bone loss. But remember, medications have side effects. So if you can do some of the things that we discussed with regard to prevention, that's key. And that will help you to protect your bones and slow down that aging process. This is a brief summary of what we've covered so far regarding um, bone loss and bone health, but I strongly urge you to visit this website, www.bones.nih.gov. NIH is the National Institute of Health, and they provide great information on many areas of health, and this one specifically is on bone health. So there is a lot up here with regard to all information on bone health, osteoporosis, other types of diseases regarding bones, and there's way too much to get into, but feel free to come to this site at any time and visit and learn more about osteoporosis and bone health. Remember, it does take work to protect your bones, but the work that you do today is going to protect you for the future, and your future body thanks you for the work you're putting in today.